actually the most popular seminar they ever had. There were, there were many devotees who actually couldn't get in because there wasn't enough room. So, uh, so there's definitely an interest in these topics. Um, <coughs> sometimes we hear, you know, we're Vaishnava, we're beyond the mode, you know, Vaishnava is higher than, you know. And it, while it sounds nice, then that only really works if you are kind of on the liberated platform. We're not. We're trying to become liberated. So we have to work with what we have. And part of what we have is a gross and a subtle body, which is either male, female, masculine, feminine, um, primarily. So knowing a little bit about how these two principles work and relate to each other can help us to um, make our lives the least possible amount of bumpiness, you know, you're going down the road and it can be very bumpy or it can be not so bumpy, right? You can get there anyway, if you want to go back to Godhead, all you have to do is desire it, but if you know a little bit about how these things work, then you can choose a path that is not so bumpy, you know, you won't get so much trouble, so that's kind of why we do this. Um, some devotees think that it's strange that a brahmachari is giving a class like this. Um, I mean, one, one point of view is, what do you know about that? Another point of view is, shouldn't you just be aloof from all that? So first of all, the, the first point of view, um, well, I mean, we're talking about philosophy, we're talking about, I mean, the, the dance of philosophy is real. It's everything that we see fits into the dance of philosophy. So I'm dealing with masculine feminine principles every day. I'm, I'm the feminine to my guru, he's the masculine in our relationship, right? So, so in all dealings, these things, and you know, you're doing service with Mataji's are there. And you read to study the Bhagavatam, it's all in there. 
So, so my advantage is that I'm not so personally involved. So for me, it's actually it can be like, kind of like a benefit that I'm a little bit aloof because I just see it for what it is. Does that make sense? Sometimes we um, hear in classes or devotees are are expressing themselves on these principles, and it becomes very biased. It becomes out of balance, like like a, 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 some Prabhu will say, well, women, they're not very intelligent, and just leave it at that. That's not really beneficial for anyone, is it? So maybe, I don't know what his situation is, maybe he has read the books but not really studied them, and he's just taking something out of context. Maybe he had a rough breakup with his wife a couple of years ago, I don't know. But because I'm not involved so much in, in these things, it sometimes is easier for me to, to kind of speak on these topics because for me it's just I'm, I'm not out to gain anything, I don't have anything invested in it, it this is just what it is, so you know, hopefully, let's see, I mean, we're just getting started, I can mess it up still, but let's hope I won't. Um, yes, so masculine feminine principles um, are everything. Everything in existence can be described in act either masculine or feminine principle. On the absolute plane and the absolute reality, there is only one masculine, that's Krishna, right? The cause of all causes, he's the masculine. Everything else is energy emanating from Krishna, so everything else is technically feminine, right? Um, on the relative material plane where we're roaming around, as indicated, everything is relative. So there are many masculine and feminine things going on all the time. In fact, everything is both masculine and feminine. So when we say masculine, Krishna, the cause of all causes. So masculine is the principle of, of cause, like cause of something. Feminine is the energy, so that's the expression of it, that's the effect. Does that make sense? That the masculine is the cause and the feminine is the effect. Now, in, in absolute reality, Krishna is the cause of all causes, so he's the only masculine. But in the re re relative reality that we're walking around in, everything is both a cause and an effect. So, the um, the study I'm doing in Mayapur is an effect of me not feeling I fit in to the Western society. <coughs> so then that happened, right? It's an effect of that. But it's also the cause, in a way, of me giving this seminar, because without it I wouldn't be able to give this seminar. Does that make sense? Now this seminar is an effect of uh, my study in Mayapur. And it's the cause of you sitting and jotting stuff down and hopefully some stuff is happening inside your head. So we see that everything has both a masculine and a feminine element to it, right? It's, it's, everything is, is both masculine and feminine, right? Now, we are in um, a material body because we have a... Uh, let's say, an incomplete understanding of reality. We, we have that because we're Jiva Tattva. That's how Krishna made us. We're called marginal energy. We're very small. We're the smallest energy of the Lord. So that's why we're fun. Because we never, you never really know what we're going to do. We, we come up with some funny stuff. That's fun. That's entertaining. Um, it also means that we're not always completely sure about what's going on. Uh, so, we have uh, a, a mindset of being the controller and the enjoyer right, of, of the world. That's, we hear that all the time, right? controller and enjoyer. So, the controller aspect is the masculine and the enjoyer aspect is the feminine. So, depending on our, um, our mindset at the time of death, if it's a little more to the control side, a masculine body will develop as our next incarnation. And if it's a little more to the enjoyer side, then a feminine body will develop as our next incarnation, right? 
And um, the Acharyas point out that uh, it's very common that you kind of switch back and forth from one incarnation to the other. So we see often um, men want to. In yes? Uh, if you have, yeah, I mean, I'm all for participation, so if there's something that's unclear or you think sounds strange or you just have a question, you're more than welcome to just raise your hand. Yes? Uh, because uh, we use the terms control and enjoyer, usually we connect that with Krishna, like he is the controller and enjoyer. So normally we think of family that which is enjoyed. So, uh, how to this? Because it seems quite similar the, to be a controller and an enjoyer. It seems like two terms in the same ballpark. So, how is it that uh, one could be the cause of a masculine, as I say, one could be the cause of a masculine form? Is that what you said? If one has the mentality of control, yeah. one will take a masculine form. Yeah. And if one has the mentality of an mm -hmm. enjoyer, mm -hmm. one will take a feminine form. Yes. So, that's. That's unclear. That, yeah, to me it seems quite, and it seems a bit of because we normally we think of the family to be enjoyed uh, of our normal. Yes, uh, so but you could explain how is it. Because okay, um, first of all, maybe, maybe that's your next step. Probably. Well, I mean, yeah. but let's do that now. Uh, first of all, being enjoyed has more enjoyment than enjoying. That's why Mahaprabhu came. It's, that's his internal reason for coming, is that. The, the mood of Radharani actually gives more pleasure and enjoyment than the mood of Krishna. So even though the, the feminine form is being enjoyed, she is also enjoying more than the masculine. The masculine doesn't have that capacity, the same capacity. So if, if you, if you want to... I'm not completely sure I understand the question, but let's see if I do. Um, that if you are focused more on the control aspect, that means you are focused on knowledge. How, do, how does this work? How, there's a logical aspect to it. The enjoyment aspect is more of an experience of how things work. So you could also say tattva and rasa. Tattva is inherently masculine and rasa is inherently feminine. Does that make sense? Not really. Well, it's a bit high term, not terminology. Uh, um, but I think I must. I may. I may slightly understand it. Let's let's see if if yes. something starts to clear up as we go along, um, because we're we're going to be kind of dealing with this as as the um, that's the general topic. So hopefully, as we go along. Otherwise, at the end, you can yeah, ask yeah. some more. Yeah. And, and I was thinking you're going to explain <coughs> that. Okay. Yeah, I mean. Let's see. Yeah. Um, see, because actually, I was gonna. I'm, I think I'll I'll take a little bit of a different route, and then we'll get more into that later, if that's okay. Okay. So so um, the thing is, we are we are we're in the material consciousness we, because we think we are in control and we are supposed to enjoy right that's that's the that's the misconception of of the material life and actually like like Tejasri Prabhu says Krishna is the controller and enjoyer we can take part in that or not that's our choice but we cannot control the universe i mean that would, that's just not how it works so so that gives us trouble we live in a society that is pri uh, primarily governed by materialistic tendencies, like our society here is about sense enjoyment, right? So what happens is that we develop this idea that if you go against your nature, that means you're free, because it kind of fuels this idea that we are the controller and enjoyer. If we still believe that I'm the controller and enjoy and I will be successful, just wait and see, then the ability to go against your nature means freedom. Does that make sense? We're all, we always like people to overcome some kind of difficulty. There is value in doing something because it's difficult. If someone uh, climbs Mount Everest, we don't say, that's stupid, we say, wow, good for you, that's marvelous, wonderful, and so many other things. 
So that's why we have this idea also in the modern society that men should be doing f inherently feminine activities and females should be doing inherently male activities. If a woman is the CEO of a multinational company, we say, yes, we need, we need more like you. If she's a housewife, we say, uh, are you oppressed or, uh, I mean, what kind of husband? I mean, I'm <coughs> painting it a little black and white now, but that's a tendency in the materialistic society that actually doesn't really help anyone because the beauty of, of uh, being different is that we can help each other. If we're all doing everything ourselves, then where's the relationship, right? So, so this is why in, in the Vedanta uh, philosophy and the Vedic culture, we actually um, advise, we, I mean, we're not trying to push anyone to do anything. Anyone is completely free to do whatever they want. But we do advise a more traditionalistic society where activities that are generally more, um, we, that we find generally women are more um, attracted to, that we advise you just do that. And then activities that men are generally more attracted to, you do that. And then you can cooperate. So then you have the full picture like that. So, so this is why it also helps to know a little bit about how we work, you know, internally. Um, because a material activity actually doesn't have any value on its own. You know, being the CEO of a big company, it has a lot of value if you walk around out in this society, people get very impressed. But in terms of um, enlightenment or self-realization or spiritual progress, it has zero value. I mean, absolutely zero value. So, so being a housewife or being a CEO of a big company, who cares? You know, if, if you if you present those two people to Prabhupada, he wouldn't. There wouldn't be a difference. You know, the the the, the difference would be in the consciousness. What what kind of consciousness? So that's what we're trying to to look at. Is that can we arrange our material lives in such a way that it's just easy? It's just not something we worry about. That's if, that's why we have so much stress in in our societies because everybody's trying to go against their nature to impress others and it's not making them happy and then that becomes everything that they're worrying about so how will you make spiritual progress if you're worried every morning you get up and have to get out of bed you're worried about going to the job you know you're not going to make spiritual progress so that's basically what we're trying trying to to look at now masculine and feminine principles as we said cause and effect uh, it, it's a little bit interesting how um, how it works because usually we have these ideas of okay, masculine is you know strong man muscles something <coughs> like that you know that's masculine and then little little I don't know uh, mini skirt or something that's feminine. It's not that simple. If we take let, let's take a bodybuilder, we would say he's masculine. But actually he's not, he's actually quite feminine, because uh, what, what, is the, what is the consciousness of the bodybuilder? He's dependent on others to judge him and, and, and say that he, he has a nice appearance and he's, he's, his life is in the, in the area of being an effect. Does that make sense? His, he is depending on whether or not the judges give him the high scores or something. He is designing his life after that. So if you take a female runway model, she will probably be less feminine than the male uh, bodybuilder. Because a female runway model, she can have so many interests, like photography or cats, whatever, you know, it's so many things. And then that's just her job. But for like a bodybuilder, a male bodybuilder, usually that's pretty much all they have going on. That's their life, you know. So that's actually a very feminine way of, of living your life, even though muscles and testosterone and whatever, you know. Uh, but but in, the ter in terms of consciousness, it's actually feminine. So, again, we're dealing with relative masculinity, because only Krishna is technically masculine. So, 
So he actually drops way down in, into very feminine. Now, this is because in, in philosophical terms, we are being enjoyed, right? That's what we were saying before. Um, so we're being enjoyed by Krishna in the form of Brahman. So actually, if like we would say, if I'm eating a piece of pizza, I would be in the masculine position because, you know, I'm eating the pizza, I'm in control. But actually it's not. Actually it's the other way around because the pizza, pizza is not dependent on me. I'm dependent on the pizza. It, it has a certain shape, it has a certain temperature, certain flavor, smell, something. There are some things that I can take part in or not. But I can't actually control the pizza. The pizza is pizza. I, I can't make it an apple, you know. So, technically, philosophically, I'm being enjoyed by the pizza. I'm the feminine. The pizza is enjoying me. I'm not enjoying the pizza. But, there's a great experience in being enjoyed, as we mentioned earlier. So, I'm getting that pleasure. But technically, the pizza is representing the Brahman aspect of Krishna, which is enjoying me. That's the experience I get. Is this getting a little bit freaky now, or is, are we on somewhat of the same page? The, the only reason I'm actually saying this is that it's, it's, it gets complicated, and we should always remember that we're all feminine, we're all being enjoyed. However, we play different roles because we are in different bodies that are, um, that, let's say, that the modes affect our bodies differently. Right? Yes? Can we say the direction of going? If you're enjoying anything material in the world, that makes you dependent. Yes. And being in a dependent state of mind makes you feminine. Yes. That makes you accept the feminine form. So, yes, I mean, so the illusion is that I'm enjoying. Right? Because you think that, I mean, because when, when we say I'm enjoying something material, actually you're not. There is, material is dead matter, there's nothing there. But, but the illusion is, I'm enjoying, when actually you're being enjoyed. And that's why it's, it's sinful, because actually Krishna is giving you something, and you're not rec recognizing that. You know? So that's where the sin comes in, right? Does that make sense? So whether it's pious or impious, that's actually, the principle is still sinful. Right? Pious is slightly less sinful, but, but in principle, that that's the illusion, that's what we're trying to get rid of, right? Um, th does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, okay. in, if enjoyment of material goes is simple, whether it's... Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. And, and, and it's illusion. It's, it doesn't exist, you know, we think it exists. We, we, we see it as some, that's the, the, the example of the rope and the snake, right? That, that we, we see, see it as something different than what it actually is. So if we... Uh, align ourselves with the nature of the body that we're in, because we're all transcendental, we're all spirit soul. But if we align ourselves with the body that we're in, then we will be the least amount of disturbed by the material energy, because it will be the least amount of of illusion, right? So, so if, if I mean, being in a material body, that's illusion on its own. Being in a material body thinking that you'll be happy acting as if you're in a different type of body, that's illusion with illusion on top of it, right? So then it just becomes even more hazy what's actually going on. And then you can throw in transgender and gay and all sorts of strange and wonderful things, and if you want to make it even more confusing. We, we humbly advise that we try to make things as, li as little confusing as, as possible.